you know, you have to try to get members of the union who are your workers to understand the fiscal situation the state has. I don't, frankly, uh, want to see tens of thousands or even thousands of state workers laid off. I don't think that's good for the public. I don't think it's good for the workers. So you try to find ways to save money without people losing their jobs. Uh, my opponent, you know, he talks about uh, great economies, but from reading your paper yesterday, if he says that these economies are going to be realized by attrition, I've already laid off people. You know, I've laid off 1,102. That's, how, that's my record. It, 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 believe me, it's an arduous, difficult process, and frankly, it's a legal process. Even if you have your rights, as you do, under the contract to do something, that doesn't mean it happens overnight. They'll go down to a court, might be in southern Illinois, they'll have a judge, you go down there, start litigating, there's a curse, ancient curse, may your life be filled with lawyers. I have to make decisions. I had to make a decision. Do I want a litigious situation that may not realize one penny of any kind of concessions or savings? Or do you follow a course where you can get more uh, agreement to save money? And now I understand that we have to save a lot of money. This is one of the ways. I mean, we are implementing other methods of saving money. The budgeting for results is the key tool to do it. I championed that law. Brady voted against it. Okay, this is a strong way that's used by other units of government to analyze the performance of their expenditures. I think we need to have that rigorous approach to state government. And so if a program isn't working, isn't producing results, then boom, it doesn't get funded the next year. And there's reporting uh, kind of metrics here. There's a lot of analysis, and this is a new process. Our state government has not done this before. Now, part of what I have to do, I, the way I look at it is, I have to maintain a state economy that's in recovery. Doing things that are reckless or precipitous can aggravate the recovery. State and local government are a major part the Illinois economy and of states around the Union. And so I don't want to do things that are harmful to our recovery. I want to maintain jobs. Uh, and so I don't want to have a blunderbuss approach to either cutting education. If you cut education by a billion dollars, which, you know, reading the paper here, sounds like Brady's all, all for, you know, 1.26 is going to happen. And he thinks it's all about the State Board of Education here. Well, you know, part of it, what they do there is make sure that the money we get from Washington is properly accounted for so we keep getting that money. You know, it's easy to, you know, just kick them around. Bogoyevich did that. But they do have some legal duties that are important for us to keep that money uh, and account for it. And so I don't want to cut teachers. And I think that's a very bad idea uh, because, in fact, I would rather use the income tax to support our education and get our budget beginning to get back in order uh, as a way of helping our recovery. Uh, I think that is the way to go. Uh, my opponent thinks raising the income tax is the worst thing he could possibly think of. Well, I, think, I can think of something really worse, raising property taxes, where you pay property taxes whether or not you have a good year or not, whether or not you make a profit, whether or not you um, even make money as a, on a job. I think our Constitution says the state should invest in education. I want to do that. I, I do have a proposal to raise money for education in its broadest sense, early childhood, kindergarten through 12th grade. Community colleges, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to invest in them. There are more students in community college than there are in four-year universities. Community college students stay in your own state. If we get, say, a young woman who is an LPN and we help her to be an RN through a community college, she's going to make thousands more dollars in her livelihood and in her life. So we have to do this. And you have to have a governor who has the common sense to tell people the truth and not a bunch of fairy tales. Well,
we must continue the economic recovery. Today, we will have very good news for our state. I can't give it to you until noon, but it's very good news. Our state is has added jobs. We've added more jobs than any Midwestern state. We've had nine straight months of declining unemployment. The unemployment today will not be in double digits. It's very important to continue that because we lost during the Great Recession, began under President Bush, and it was a precipitous decline in our state's revenue. So we're now coming out of that. We have to have a governor who can guide that uh, with of prudent, targeted investments, focusing on education. Actually, the numbers now are better than expected on sales tax and income tax. It's a little hard to predict what, say, the end between now and the end of the fiscal year are. But Illinois has um, created probably more. Well, we've created more manufacturing jobs than any Midwestern state, and probably more in the whole country. Manufacturing jobs, which man get magnified into other jobs, so. I focus every day on recovery because I think that's part of our budget balancing. Secondly, we'll go through this whole rigorous process in this fiscal year, quarter by quarter, literally day by day, on budgeting for results. So we're going to crank out as much savings as we can in this fiscal year. I have Julie Hamos, who's a very competent person. She's now the head of health care and family services. We are implementing managed care for Medicaid doing it in a very targeted way, sensitive way. We're going to save some money there. We had two bidders. I was told when we began this, this would never happen. We had five bidders. We picked two, managed care for Medicaid. We are going through, for example, office space consolidation. You know, we're going to shrink that down, whether it's here or anywhere else in Illinois. Okay, so we realize savings within the fiscal year. That's secondly. Thirdly, we have to get... Uh, more federal money. Uh, part of it is the enhanced match for Medicaid. Very important. Uh, I got that done. Senator Brady wouldn't have even tried. Uh, we got $415 million to keep teachers working. That's very important for our education budget. Got to be spent only on education. That's the federal law. We are also getting other federal money for educational improvement, got money for broadband deployment. We're getting federal money. Thirdly, that's certainly. Fourthly, uh, we have to get more revenue, period, through the income tax. That's what I've proposed. I believe that, that once you've shrunk the government as far as that possible, you have to have a governor tell people the truth. Not like Governor Thompson. He said, you know, before the election, won't raise taxes. And he did it after the election. So did Ryan. You know, he, you know Jim Egger, he gave Don Clark Netch a hard time in 94, about her proposal on the income tax, but he embraced it afterwards, some kind of version of it at least. So I don't believe in that. I think the people should be told ahead of time that you have a governor who's telling you that in order to have a better state, we need to invest in education through the income tax. I'm going to be pilloried for it in the next 12 days as I have for the last 12 months, uh, but it's the truth, and I think that's what governors should do, tell the truth. Uh, education... Jobs follow brain power. Boom. Now, finally, the fifth pillar of our program, strategic borrowing. We've had to do that to keep the recovery going, not to lay people off in private jobs or public jobs that are necessary. As we said earlier, we have the fewest number of state employees per capita of any state in the union. There's a limit to how much you cut without harming the public service. So, uh, Strategic borrowing is a very key part of our five pillars of getting back on track and paying down this deficit. And, um, you know, that's where I'm coming from. I think it's an honest plan of economic recovery, cutting costs, uh, making sure that we um, get federal money that we're entitled to as much as possible, uh, getting revenue strategically placed in the same way with the borrowing. You know, uh, I don't know how else you can do it. The honest way to look at this, for us to recover on our budget, is it's, it's an exercise that will take four years. I mean, over a four-year period of time, using economic growth, cutting costs, investing in education, making sure you get all the federal money you can possibly get, and finally, using strategic borrowing, that's how you can get back to balance. 
It's not a one-year exercise. It is definitely not what Senator Brady has proposed, $1 billion of cuts in the estate tax on multimillionaires, because we have a very you can have a very generous exemption on the estate tax for ordinary people. But, you know, there's some very wealthy people in our state to abolish the state tax and have them pay nothing while we lay off 20,000 teachers is shameful. And I'm not going to ever do that. That's a very bad idea. He has other ideas of cutting taxes to increase the budget deficit. And then he says, sometimes, uh, that he will balance the budget in one year. This is ridiculous. You know, you have to be honest. I think over a four-year term, we can get back to where we ought to be. It's going to take a Herculean effort, and I'm willing to put in the time to do it. And I think this is important. You know, whatever you think of me, I guess, my political adversaries, I'm a hard worker. I work on this job all the time, night and day. That's how I was able to get a lot of big businesses to grow jobs here in Illinois. They know they have an honest person who works hard, who pays attention. I was state treasurer. I know a lot about finance. I was a lieutenant governor. I worked with a lot of different people in different parts of Illinois. And, and now I'm governor. And I think you have to have a steady person who's not risky. My opponent is reckless and wrong. And, you know, he's, I think, really doing a disservice to the people of Illinois by acting like this is a simple exercise of a dime and a dollar that we've already done. And we have to, he's talking about, I think, things that are really just plain wrong. Well, I think if you have a new program with a surcharge for education and money is given to uh, schools across our state, uh, school districts, that uh, in the course of the legislative process, I would certainly advocate that there be an abatement by the local school district if it's getting new money from Springfield, it would abate part of that uh, new money that they're receiving on their local property tax uh, levy. I think that's a fair way to go. Um, you know, I think we have to negotiate that. But I do want to get, after four years, uh, where the state is doing much more of its share of funding education and local property taxes are less, a, less relied upon for funding education. I think that's a worthy goal that really the people adopted 40 years ago and it's time to start delivering. I think if there's more money coming from the state government for local education, there needs to be a bargain that the local school districts begin to abate their levy. We'll have to negotiate that. And, you know, I've done that on very complex things like the pension, public pension reform, as well as the uh, capital bill that was passed. You know, these are matters that you got to get a lot of people in a room and work out details. But I think that's a, a, a very good bargain for the taxpayer. We shouldn't rely excessively on regressive levies that aren't based on ability to pay for funding important things like schools. And so I'm willing to try this and make it happen. Uh, you have to, Jim Edgar proposed it after he was reelected in 1994 and passed one house. Uh, there was a, I can't remember all the, you know, the specifics of his proposal, but it was basically the income tax would be raised in exchange for local property tax relief, in part. The local schools got additional revenue for their work. To me, that's something that would be very important for our state's economy. It will improve our economy. You know, I heard a lot last night about Indiana. And Senator uh, Brady said, well, Indiana and Tennessee – you know, I don't. I want to stay in Illinois. Indiana has a higher unemployment rate than we do. They have a higher income tax. Tennessee is, you know, we have a better economy than they do. I mean, this notion that somewhere else is better. We have tough work to do, and I think that's part of the role of a governor to tell people it's not all easy street. You know, you don't just get to eat ice cream sundaes all the time. You know, governors have to tell people. We have to make some sacrifices today in order to have a better state tomorrow for our kids. Parents sacrifice their present for their children's future. It's an American tradition, and it's a good one, and I believe in that. And so I think sometimes in tough times, the last thing you want is Governor Easy Street, who th thinks it's all about waving your hand and all of a sudden good things will happen.